we've got a lot to tell you about today. Not one, but two comets might be bright in the October sky. Dave, pronounce the name of this comet for us. You're the best one at pronouncing. <laughs> you would catch me off guard like that. It is Shu Shin Shan Atlas. It's C slash 2023 A3. So the 2023 means that it was discovered in 2023. And actually, they thought that this comet had disintegrated. It was coming in and people got kind of excited about it. Then they thought it was disintegrating and they got kind of negative about it. And then it, it didn't disintegrate <laughs> and suddenly it got much brighter. And, and this is so typical of comets. They just do whatever they want to do. They're very, very unpredictable. But this image is from John Ashley, who is a member of our community. He took this from Tucumcari, Arizona on September 30th when the comet was in the morning sky. Here's an image from October 1st from Australia. This is the stereo spacecraft that caught the comet on October 4th. And they reported that it looks really bright. So when it comes into the evening sky, we could have quite a show. What do you think, Marcy? Well, you know, comets are, are like meteor showers. You hope for the best and prepare for the worst, right? <laughs> but hopefully... It's, it's been a performer in the morning sky, and once it gets closest to Earth on October 12th, it'll be moving into the evening sky, and hopefully we'll have a, a good show and you'll be able to see it with the unaided eye. If not, sweep the western sky with binoculars and use a star app. I recommend that because it's going to show you which direction the tail is pointing. It's really helpful to know which direction that tail is going to point from your location to help you locate it. So it doesn't look like a star, right? It does not. The brightest spot's going to be the head of the comet, um, which is made up of the coma and the nucleus. The nucleus is the, the basic dirty snowball that makes up the comet. And as it gets near the sun, it starts to like evaporate and, and it makes like a little cloud around the nucleus. That's called the coma. And so basically the head of the comet is always going to be the brightest. And there's usually two tails coming off the comet. There's a gas tail and a dust tail. And they're amazing to see in a dark sky. So hopefully we get a good show with this. And the planet Venus is also in the west after sunset right now. And it's very, very bright. So I don't want anybody looking out there and seeing the planet Venus and saying, it's the comet. I see it. It is not the comet. And notice in this charge showing October 14th that the comet is close to the horizon here. But then just a couple days later, on October 17th, the comet has moved higher in the sky. So now it's above and to the right of Venus in the west after sunset. But it's not the only comet that nope. we might see in the <laughs> October night sky. We have two comets. And here's the other one. This is S1. And it's green. It's a green comet, which can be sometimes an indication of the composition of the gas, but this is a sun grazer and all of the great comets of the past have been sun grazers in this class. So we'll see what happens. I mean, really, it's, it's impossible to, to guess. Especially a sun grazer, because when it goes past the sun, it might not survive. But if it does survive, then it may turn into something like this. And this is Comet Ikea Seki of 1965. This comet is very similar to what Comet S1 uh, is like because it was seen in advance. It was seen that it was going to be a sun grazing comet. It did go around the sun and then it became bright enough to be visible near the sun in the daytime sky. And that's the prediction for S1. S1 might become bright enough to be visible in the daytime near the sun. 